Welcome back guys, JC here, and today let's talk about replacing these JST connectors that love to break off of our flight controllers. And this doesn't just apply to flight controllers, this is going to apply to everything really. Now I will say what a lot of us do once these connectors break off, we just direct solder our, our wires right to the pads. Uh, you can totally do that if you have a soldering iron with a tip fine enough. Matter of fact, on a lot of my flight controllers, I purposely remove these. I don't break them off. I do use a hot air gun uh, to safely remove them without tearing the pads off. But let's just say you do want to replace the connector and not direct solder wires. So first, I'm going to talk about where you can get the new connector. Uh, if you know where to get it from, then you can feel free to fast forward through this video. Uh, so what I do is I actually... You can buy the connector by themselves, but what I do is get the connector and wires at the same time just because it's so cheap and you never know when you need new wires. So uh, let's talk about the, the sizes first. So if we go to the SP Racing Evo just for this example because it uses the most standard connector, uh, this is a JST 1.0 millimeter spacing 4-pin connector. 1.0 is going to be the most common size. Now sometimes you will run into 1.25, which is the same uh, connector used on almost all cameras. Just for example, this is a 1.25 millimeter spacing. Then you have the 1.5 millimeter spacing, which is going to be a larger connector like this. Just to give you an idea. Uh, now there are names for JST connectors. There's JST SH, which is going to be the same thing as 1.0 millimeter spacing. Then you have the Pico Blade, which is 1.25 millimeter, and then there's ZH, which is the 1.5, which is uh, what we just looked at right here. But like I said, the most common one is going to be SH. So you can just go to eBay and do a search for JST SH 1.00 millimeter, and then how many pins you need. Like I said, this would be a 4-pin connector because there's 4 wires coming out of it. Uh, the one that I need is a 6-pin for this example. So I would search for 6-pin and you will come up with uh, results like this. And you will see that the wires come with the connector. Or if you need a 1.25mm uh, connector then just do JST 1.25mm 4-pin or 6-pin or 3-pin, whatever, however many pins you need. Okay, so now we have found and ordered the wires and connectors that we need, uh, which is, a, I have a new one right here. The other tip I have is, these pins come in 90 degree and they also come in straight. So for example, this one is in 90 degree. The pins, instead of coming straight out, they're actually bending down. So I would almost be forced, because the pins, because the pins are coming out this way, this connector is going to be soldered on up instead of out. If you do want straight pins, then make sure you're getting one with straight pins, which would be like that. Uh, personally, I, I actually like the 90 degree because it faces the connector up, so whenever I plug in my harness, the wires aren't coming out and hanging off the edge of my multi-rotor. Next, you may want to get some solder wick. Uh, you can get this off of eBay really cheap. Go ahead and heat up your uh, soldering iron and once it's hot, uh, the, the point of the solder wick is we're going to remove all the solder off the pads. I'm going to place my fly controller in my helping hand just to hold it still and now use the solder wick to remove as much solder as we can. If you're having a tough time getting the solder off with the solder wick, um, uh, what I'm going to do is add a little bit of flux paste to it, and that should help. Okay, looking pretty good. Now I'm just going to take some uh, flux cleaner and remover, spray that on, and use a brush to clean everything up. Now with everything looking nice and clean, I'm going to take some more flux, some new flux, and put it back on. Not much, just a little bit.
I'm just going to touch it with my soldering iron to kind of heat it up. Get it spread around a little bit. Now I will take solder paste and you don't need much of this at all. Uh, just enough to barely cover the pads. Just remember you don't want to use too much because if you do use too much then once you uh, heat it up then the pads could short against one another and that would not be good. I'm going to take my ceramic tweezers and grab the new connector and you want to hold this in place and keep everything as straight as possible because as soon as you get your soldering iron close the solder paste is going to turn into a solid. Once you get those pins on, then remember to do the sides. Okay, now it's on. Uh, the last step is to take your flux remover to you, because you do want to remove the flux and any extra solder paste. I'll use the brush. And there you have it guys, repair complete. Uh, just make sure that none of these pads are shorting against one another. Also make sure that uh, you did solder these sides on for that extra support so it won't break off as easy again. And you are now done. So that does it for this one guys. Thanks for watching. Check out my repairs playlist for other helpful repairs as well as my other playlist. And I will see you again soon.